Hello there, I'm Mohammed Amahamdan and you're tuned into Nightline, the top stories. Immigration, customs personnel reminded to act with integrity. And MACC probes illicit funds in cargo smuggling syndicate. Good morning. We begin with this headlining story. Members of the Customs Department and Immigration Department have been urged to carry out their duties with full discipline and integrity. A call was made by Prime Minister Dr. Suri Anwar Ibrahim to the law enforcement officers when he made a surprise visit to Pulau Pinang International Airport, LTAPP, on Friday. In a Facebook post on Saturday, Anwar said the visit to the LTAPP was to see for himself the management and facilities of the airport, as well as the deployment of personnel, especially those from the Customs Department and Immigration Department. He also said he wants all concerned members to ensure that there are no shortcomings, which in turn could cause billions of ringgit in losses to the country. Last Tuesday, the Prime Minister said the government is closely monitoring all enforcement agencies to prevent fraud towards fighting corruption. He hoped that through the monitoring, it would avoid fraudulent activities, such as bribery among civil servants who are tasked with safeguarding national security and interest. Anwar said this after the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, MACC, had revealed that the value of leakages due to the smuggling activities of a syndicate, which involved members of the Customs Department at the Kuala Lumpur International Airport, KLIA Cargo Complex, amounted to 2 billion ringgit for the past three years. Anwar, who is also the Finance Minister, said that the expansion of the LTAPP was among the issues raised in the briefing on Pulau Pinang's development in Komta in conjunction with his visit to the state on Friday. The project, which costs over 1 billion ringgit, was approved by the cabinet last week, with Malaysia Airport Holdings Berhad MEHB responsible for the tender process and financing of the project. The Civil Aviation Authority of Malaysia, CAAM, has conducted special purpose inspections, or SPI, at 19 domestic and international airports nationwide during the first two months of this year. The Transport Ministry, MOT, said the inspection focused on critical aerodrome facilities, including runways, taxiways, aprons and wind direction indicators to ensure compliance with standards outlined in the Civil Aviation Directive's CAD 14. In a statement on Saturday, the MOT said that it has collaborated with CAAM to undertake proactive measures to ensure safety and compliance at Malaysian aerodromes, which were prompted by an air accident at Haneda International Airport in Tokyo, Japan, earlier this year. According to MOT, the CAAM has also organized a complying workshop on March 26, attended by 66 representatives of aerodrome operators nationwide. The workshop aimed to enhance cooperation between the CAAM as the regulatory body and aerodrome operators. The ministry also expressed joint commitment with the CAAM to ensure that all aerodromes in Malaysia comply with international standards set by the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO. It said this was crucial not only to ensure the highest level of aerodrome safety, but also to prepare Malaysia for ICAO's future audit program. Moving on, the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, MACC, continues to pursue an extensive investigation into a smuggling syndicate involved in the illegal importation and sale of alcohol and cigarettes. The operation, which has implicated officers and members of the Customs Department, has resulted in a loss of tax revenue amounting to 2 billion ringgit. According to a source, multiple measures are being taken, including the tracking of illicit funds stemming from the smuggling activities. The source revealed that a total of 34 individuals have been detained in connection with the smuggling syndicate and that there have been no new arrests involving civil servants and company owners. The MACC's anti-money laundering division also froze 231 bank accounts belonging to individuals and companies acting as dummy accounts with a freezing amount of over 17.6 million ringgit. 
The detained individuals aged between 30 and 50 comprise a range of positions within the Customs Department, from Customs Enforcement Assistants to Assistant Customs Directors, stationed at the Import and Export Branch in Kelai A Cargo Sapang. Investigations also found that these individuals allegedly received bribes totaling more than 4.7 million ringgit from the syndicate to facilitate various smuggling activities, including cigarettes, alcohol and vehicle spare parts. The investigation paper involving AMNO Youth Chief Dr. Muhammad Akmal Saleh in connection with the recent controversy involving the sale of socks bearing the word Allah is expected to be completed within five days. Inspector General of Police Tansu Razaruddin Hussein said it will then be submitted to the Attorney General's Chambers, AGC, for further action. Razaruddin on Saturday said that the police had recorded Dr. Akmal's statement on Friday and the investigation paper is being completed before being submitted to the AGC next week. On Friday, the nation's top cop confirmed that the Murlimau assemblyman was detained at the Kota Kinabalu International Airport for investigations under the Sedition Act and Multimedia Act. He was released after giving his statement in a session lasting over two hours. When met by the media after his release, Dr. Akmal claimed that he was taken into police custody at the Kota Kinabalu District Police Headquarters, even though he was scheduled to give his statement to the police at the Dangwangi District Police Headquarters in the federal capital on Saturday. He was summoned in relation to two police reports filed against him over a video of his speech in Kelantan, which was shared on social media over the controversial socks found in KK Supermart. Cases involving the three R issues, namely race, religion and royalty, saw a massive 123% increase this year compared to 2023 based on data gathered from the e sepakat system. National Unity Minister Dr. Aaron Agodagang said there were 47 cases recorded in the first quarter of this year involving religious issues, hate speech and racially charged speech compared to 21 cases in the same period last year. In a statement on Saturday, Aaron said 1,454 3R-related contents were taken down from social media platforms from January to March 31st. A total of 588 cases were identified by the Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission MCMC, as containing racial hate speech, while 727 involved religious hate speech and 139 were related to royal institutional hate speech. On reports related to racial clashes recorded by the police, Aaron said a total of 162 cases were recorded nationwide, with the highest number of cases in Johor with 53, followed by Selangor with 34 cases and Pulau Pinang with 23 cases. He added that although the National Unity Ministry does not have special powers or provisions to take legal action, the ministry through the Department of National Unity and National Integration plays an important role in helping to manage unity issues. Aaron also reminded the people on the need to be responsible and to play a role in upholding harmony, sovereignty, peace and security for the country. Four Facebook account owners suspected of sending fake content involving the organization of Quran recital events in the country were summoned by the Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission, MCMC, to have their statements recorded on Friday. MCMC also stated that several other individuals would be called to assist in the investigation. In a statement on Saturday, the MCMC stated that all data uploaded by the individuals concerned had been recorded as evidence for further action. The case is being investigated under the Communications and Multimedia Act, which provides a maximum fine of 50,000 ringgit or imprisonment for up to one year or both upon conviction. Claims about Malaysia no longer organizing Quran recital competitions but focusing more on holding concerts have gone viral on social media platforms for the past few days. This was refuted by Deputy Minister in the Prime Minister's Department for Religious Affairs, Dr. Zulkifli Hassan, last Wednesday. He said that the national level Quran recital and memorization competition has been set for May 23rd to 28th in Kuantan Pahang 
while the International Quran Recitation and Memorization Competition is scheduled from October 5th to 12th. Police have recorded a statement from a man who was caught on CCTV bringing a suitcase containing 500,000 ringgit, which was found at a shopping mall in Damansara. Selangor Police Chief Dr. Hussein Omar Khan said that the man is from the same timber company as the director who claimed ownership of the suitcase last week. Other than recording the individual statement, Hussein said they have also identified seven sets of fingerprints on the bag and will conduct further investigations. Authorities will also investigate the source of the money and will only return the suitcase once they are satisfied that it does indeed belong to the claimant. Earlier, Hussein said police will call in three more witnesses who are friends of the claimant to assist in the investigation. The director, who claimed the suitcase, said he was unaware that the money, which had been taken from his friend's apartment unit above the shopping mall, was not placed in his vehicle. The man also said his friend wanted to return the money after borrowing it last year for investment purposes. <laughs> Hundreds remain stranded after Taiwan's quake. News from the foreign front when we return. That my first experience around MCI to go to airstrike. You tak kali the bunyi and gegaran scenario blood. Nah, boleh dengar kan? Masalah nombor satu memang pain killer tak cukup. Mereka dapat makanan, dijual balik. Tapi mereka nak duit untuk beli barang lain. Dan mereka sangat berharap perang ini akan tamat. Stream sekarang melalui tonton. Ayah! Ayah datang! Hidupnya tidak seindah kanak-kanak lain. Aku minta kau jelo, kau degil. Cuma dia belajar dengan beruk dia. Dalam derita yang mendera, Umar merintih dalam kepedihan yang tak terlukiskan. Kenapa kamu ni? Ha? Dahlah sekolah jangan datang, datang pula lambat. Cikgu tahu tak, setiap kali habis sekolah, dia kerja. Lukisan Hati Umar, Ahad Tidak ini 10 TV. malam. Di Cereka Ahad TV 3 dan stream sekarang melalui Tonton. We're back with news from the foreign front. A Hamas delegation headed by the group's deputy chief in Gaza will go to Cairo on Sunday for Gaza ceasefire talks in response to an invitation extended by Egyptian mediators. In a statement, the group said the demands include a permanent ceasefire, the withdrawal of Zionist forces from Gaza, a return of the displaced and a serious exchange deal of Palestinian prisoners for Israeli hostages being held in Gaza. Meanwhile, the regime is still continuing with its air and artillery strikes, pounding major parts of Gaza, including the central and eastern areas. The Zionist military had also arrested at least 45 Palestinians in the last 24 hours, in which many of those were worshippers leaving Al-Aqsa Mosque in occupied East Jerusalem. According to Gaza's health ministry, at least 46 Palestinians were killed and 65 others wounded in the past 24 hours, bringing the total death toll to 33,137. Slovaks on Saturday voted for a new president of the EU and NATO member in a tight race between a government ally and a critic who are at odds over the war in neighbouring Ukraine. A potential shift further towards Russia was at stake for the country in the runoff between pro-West diplomat Ivan Korot and Ukraine skeptic parliament speaker Petr Pellegrini. Korot, a 60-year-old 60, 60 former foreign minister and staunch Ukraine supporter, and the 48-year-old Pellegrini are vying to replace the outgoing liberal president Zuzana Kaputova. They are squaring off in a decisive second round as neither took the necessary 50% to win outright in last month's initial ballot. Russia's invasion of Ukraine became a fixture of the electoral campaign in the country of 5.4 million people after populist Prime Minister Robert Fitch 
uh, Robert Fiso, Pellegrini's <sighs> ally, had questioned Ukraine's sovereignty and called for peace with Russia. In Taiwan, rescue helicopters flew sorties on Saturday to plug tourists to safety after a massive earthquake cut off roads and blocked tunnels, leaving hundreds stranded for days in the mountains. According to authorities, more than 600 people, including about 450 at a hotel in the Taroko National Park, remained stranded in various locations cut off by rock slides and other damages. At least four more people remain missing on the same Shakadang Trail in Taroko National Park, famed for its rugged mountainous terrain. Officials said search and recovery work was set to resume after being called off on Friday afternoon due to multiple aftershocks. The death toll following the Wednesday's quake rose to 13 on Saturday after another body was discovered in hard-hit Taroko National Park. And over in Australia, at least 152 people had been rescued from floodwaters in the eastern state of New South Wales after torrential rain sparked warnings for residents to move to higher ground. Authorities said so far 72 rescues were carried out in state capital Sydney, the nation's largest city where there was dangerous flooding in several low-lying suburbs. Premier of New South Wales, Chris Minns, in a televised media conference said some 15 emergency evacuation orders were also in place statewide, warning that flood levels in some of the rivers, particularly in western Sydney, are continuing to rise. Torrential rains pummeled Australia's southeast on Friday, dumping almost a month's worth of rainfall on Sydney and prompting warnings for people to avoid non-essential travel and stay indoors. Hilal unbeaten streaks continues. Sports after this breather. Merayakan sinar lebaran buat pesakit kanser. Saya disahkan mengidap kanser endometrium iaitu dinding rahim. Ia adalah perjalanan yang sukar sebab saya seorang ibu tunggal. Dan Alhamdulillah saya dapat rawatan, buat pembedahan dan disambung dengan radioterapi dan brachyterapi. Saya ni seorang yang curious. So soalan dekat hati terbuka. Islam ni sebenarnya apa? Setahun sebelum saya berkahwin dengan isteri, saya dah masuk Islam. Nona di TV3 dan stream juga melalui tonton. Wah, nampaknya ramai yang dah tak sabar nak tahu tiga lagi pot berbuka puasa minggu ini. Abang Ngapi, makanannya sudah siap. Dia punya kepala ikan yang memang tak ada kot saiz besar. No. Buat yang suka makan kongsi-kongsi. Ini nak rasa sikit, ini nak rasa sikit. Elok sangat kalau anda order yang ini. Ha? Oh, tak sabarnya nak tunggu waktu berbuka puasa. Kan? Saksikan Jalan-Jalan Cari Makan Ramadan setiap Ahad 11.30 pagi hanya di TV3 dan stream juga melalui tonton. Back. Sport squash the 2024 German Open. National player Eng Yan Yeo inched a step closer to clinching the title after making his way into the semi-finals of the PSA bronze level event. Facing India's Velavan Santil Kumar in the quarterfinals, world number 22 Ian Yeo faced no trouble claiming the first game 11-7. The fourth seed remained on top in the second and third games and made quick work of his 59th ranked opponent to win 11-6, 11-4. The Asian champion will face top seed Joel Makin of Wales next. And on to football now, the Saudi Pro League Al-Hilal continued their unstoppable march for the title with a convincing 4-1 win at Al-Khalij to extend their world record winning streak to 32 matches. 
It did not take Al Hilal long to stamp their superiority after they took the lead through Saleh Al Shehri seven minutes into the game. The home side, however, quickly responded and found the leveller two minutes later through Muhammad Sharif's header. But unsurprisingly, leaders Al Hilal retook the lead three minutes before the break through Malcolm. The Brazilian then put any doubts about the outcome to bed and scored his second strike of the match three minutes into the second half. Abdullah Al Hamdan then put the icing on the cake after scoring a stoppage time penalty to seal a 4 1 victory for Al Hilal. The record extending win sees Al Hilal top the standings with 77 points, while Al Khalid are in ninth place with 34 points. On to tennis for 2024, Houston Open defending champion Francis Tiafo defeated Australia's Jordan Thompson in straight sets to reach the semi finals. World number 21 TFO comfortably beat six seeder Thompson 7 6 6 4, marking his best win of the season to date. TFO will play Italian Luisiano Darderi next. Earlier, 22 year old Darderi continued his surprising run at the US Men's Clay Court Championship with a straight sets victory over Marcus Giron. The unseeded Italian knocked out the American seven-seeded Giron 6-love, six 6-4 six to reach the semi-finals. Joining him was Ben Shelton. Top-seeded Shelton came on top of compatriot Brendan Nakashima after a hard-fought battle to reach the semi-finals. In his first quarter-final on clay, the American won 7-5, seven 7-6 seven in 2 hours and 15 minutes to set up a semi-final clash with Argentina's Thomas Martin Echeverri. Fire destroys 14 houses in number one. Kita menguruskan manusia, banduan, dengan pelbagai kerana, dengan pelbagai uh, masalah, dengan pelbagai kesulitan. Hukuman di dunia telah diberi kepada dia, dia telah menjalani hukuman penjara. Apa salah kita memberi peluang kedua kepada banduan untuk dia berubah? Macam saya cakap tadi lah, kalau nak tanya dengan orang, tak ada seorang pun yang nak jadi pegawai pihara, tak ada. Dia friendzone aku ke? Takkan dia scam pula. Cici, hmm? you awak -awa tak ada cakap apa-apa ke? Cikgu marah papa ke? Cikgu awak dengan papa. Saya tak suka tau. Awak jangan apa-apa pandai. Nak cakap saya syok dekat awak lagi. Eh? Wow, datang dekat sini. Saksikan mini siri Hello Saya Anak Uncle Ahad 9 malam di TV3 dan stream sekarang melalui Tonton. Thanks for staying with us. Firefighters travelled almost 90 kilometers deep into Sabah's interior to put out a fire that torched 14 houses in Kampung Tikandis in Nabawan district on Saturday morning. State Fire and Rescue Department Operations Commander Shalverinus Julius said that the team of firefighters did their best to get to the fire after receiving a distress call at 9.16 a.m. However, they encountered difficulty in accessing the area as road conditions did not allow a fire rescue tender engine to get to the scene. Due to the untarred, damaged and narrow road conditions, only the fire rescue vehicle Triton managed to arrive at the scene to put out the fire. The blaze was brought under control at 11.30am using open water tanks and water from a nearby river. 
No casualties reported and the cause of the fire is still being investigated. A runaway tapir which had escaped from the Johor Zoo was found wandering along Jalan Gertap Mirah Johor early Saturday morning. In the 3.15 a.m. incident, a team from the Malaysian Civil Defence Force, MCDF, were conducting an operation when they encountered the animal, which was headed towards the city centre. The incident took place before Sahur, as the MCDF personnel were conducting Ops Prihatin, an operation to locate the homeless population. They then spotted a tapir running in the direction of the city centre and immediately contacted the Wildlife and National Parks Department, Perhilitan, to coordinate a joint rescue operation and prevent any untoward incidences. Checks later showed that the tapir had escaped from the nearby Johor Zoo. MCDF and Perhilitan personnel finally managed to catch the animal and returned it to the zoo around 4 a.m., some 40 minutes after it had escaped. A 21-second video of the runway tape had also made its rounds on social media, showing the Perhilitan and MCDF personnel chasing after the animal to rescue it. Now, Ramadan is a holy month for Muslims marked by almsgiving, penitence and abstinence. While many reflect on their blessings and give to those in need, how do those who don't have much to begin with observe the month? FMT's Danish Rajareza has the story. Every year, millions of Muslims around the world observe the holy month of Ramadan, a time for reflection, religious devotion and acts of charity. In fact, it is during this month that the highest amount of zakat is collected, a clear indication that many Muslims worry about the less fortunate in society. Many Muslims also say that they fast as a sign of respect for those who live in poverty. But how do those who are indeed poor experience the fasting month? Meet Nur Izhar Mazlan and Shida Nur Ahmad. Every morning before the sun rises, the couple wake up their children for sahur, a meal of rice, omelette, and leftover meat from dinner the night before, courtesy of Pratiwi Soup Kitchen. Though a simple meal, Shida says it's enough to keep them going until they break fast in the evening. Around 8.30 a.m., Nur Izhar makes his way to the eggplant farm he works at under an initiative by the Federal Territory's Islamic Council. Day in, day out, Nur Izhar tends to the crops, hopeful that after one year of harvests, he can secure ownership of the land. He sees this farm as his family's lifeline out of their poverty. Meanwhile, Shida queues up at the Pertiwi Soup Kitchen Distribution Center in Midantuanku, awaiting for her turn to collect food for her family's iftar. Depending on the day, she juggles her responsibilities, sometimes working part-time as a cleaner to support her family. As they come together to break their fast, Nor Isar and Shida reflect on the significance of the Holy Month and the invaluable lessons it has taught them. While Nur Isar and Shida hold on to the hope that the eggplant farm will be there someday, the couple look back on how far they've come with hope and faith to sustain their stomachs and their spirits. Danish Raja Reza, FMT for Nightline.
And that wraps up this edition of Nightline. But before we go, let's take a stroll through a field blooming with over half a million tulips, offering a vibrant burst of spring to visitors in Crawley, southern England. With that, I'm Muhammad Amahamdan. Thank you for tuning in. And to our Muslim viewers, Salamat Basahur.